Hello and welcome to the Multicultural AFL Foodie Panel. My name is Vanessa Gatica and I'm joined by my regular panelists, Gabriel D'Angelo and Javier Sincan. Hello, guys. Hello, Vanessa. Okay, Vanessa, Javier. Lots of excitement this week as the AFL roll out its next compact fixture before the end of the home and away season starting next week. And we will have more on the consequences with George Grossius coming up next. But first, review of the round 12. Last Thursday, Sydney squashed the GWS Giants in the cold hunger derby. On Friday, Geelong nailed the Lada leaders for Adelaide, while the Roos were unlucky to go down by a point to Brisbane, and Melbourne inflicted a heavy duty loss to Collingwood. Carlton came from behind to beat Fremantle after the controversial umpire's decision and a miracle kick after the siren. The Doggies destroyed Adelaide, St Kilda dominated Essendon, West Coast decimated Hawthorne, and on Monday night, Richmond beat the Gold Coast. What are your thoughts, Javier? Well, I suppose uh, more than that game, uh, <laughs> I would really like to talk about Sydney, the way they destroyed Giants. I mean, I never in my wildest of thought that uh, they're going to beat GWS. Then uh, we know that GWS has been doing not that good without Toby Green, especially. Mm. But to come to that le low level, I, I didn't expect that of them. And I'm not taking anything away from Sydney Swans, the way they played. Uh, even Tom Pepley didn't score anything. He only scored like three behinds or something like that. And with no contribution from him and still the team won uh, with, with that uh, margin and everything. Uh, that, that was just phenomenal. And uh, now we can really say that uh, how much impact uh, uh, all the injuries are having at Sydney at the moment. Mm -hmm. And Brisbane, uh, they they really need to get their game up like uh, i don't i can't see them going the top eight and so but the way they are playing unless it's at gaba i don't think they've got any chance of playing any 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 yeah. team and, and and they they're very wasteful in gaba too mm. uh, but uh, full credit to north melbourne the way they played and that really showed them the brisbane that they really need to work hard on their game yeah if, if brisbane were a little bit more accurate if they're not so wasteful in their kicking, then Brisbane can decimate anyone. Yeah. Um, we've talked about this a few times already, where the Brisbane Lions, they did a fantastic job. They were great. They were wonderful. They won and this, that, and the next thing, but very wasteful in front of goal. And just touching up on what you said earlier about GWS, about how they're missing Toby Green. Toby Green, you know, love him or hate him or whatever, but his presence in that team mm. really gave them this sort of grunt, this sort of... Um, boost if you like because you know GWS they have some fantastic players we're not yeah. saying that they're, that they're not any good they are very good but injury shouldn't be affecting them yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. right it should not be affecting them because when you take a look at a team like Richmond Richmond have mm. a lot of injuries but they're doing really really well yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's almost like it's not affecting them at all it's almost like it's it's actually giving them a lift because the younger mm. guys are like well we've got to prove why we should be playing and it's sort of like giving them that lift. Collingwood's on the other end of that as well. Mm. Heaps of injuries, but they're doing really, really badly. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to, um, well, I'm surprised that you didn't point out the, the amazing job that the Bulldogs had done against Adelaide. <laughs> well, well, to me, it, it was amazing. Yeah, a win nonetheless. That was good. But if, if, <laughs> the, when I look at the number of behinds in that game, I, I, I'm yeah. not yes. very happy. Not yeah, really yeah, happy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, could have been the, worse. Yeah, they, they could have got their percentage up to uh, like a, a big level. Yeah. Where if it comes to percentage, they well, could have made it. Their topic. opportunity, right? Yeah. To do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they had they had that fantastic opportunity, but to me they sort of wasted that. But nonetheless, uh, I mean that's the game we were expecting. Um, you should have won. Yeah, yeah of you should have won. And uh, lucky for us that we are here. Otherwise, yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> you, you talking my team and talk about your team. St Kilda, like they are just killing at the moment. I mean, well, Essendon's were really bad. It's not really bad, but St Kilda, like they're phenomenal at this year. Yes, yeah, so, uh, St Kilda, they did a very. I'm going to put my St Kilda hat on for this uh, particular conversation. Yes, yeah, St Kilda were fantastic, thoroughly impressed. Um, but again, they have this sort of thing where in the third quarter they sort of drop down a little bit. They sort of drop mm. down in quality, um, and then they start really, really well at the beginning. But there's something about Essendon that I actually want to ask you guys because. For the past couple of weeks, we've been saying how Essendon, a little bit like the Bulldogs, well, we don't know what Essendon are going to show up. It's like sometimes they play mm. really, really well and we go, wow. Sometimes they play really, really badly like they did against St Kilda. But these past couple of weeks, 
we've I've sort of noticed that with Essendon and how they've got this um, secession plan when it comes to the mm. coaches, where this is going to be Walshfold's final year, and then Brett Ratman's going to step up. Mm. But every time I watch, I'm like, who's coaching? Exactly. You know, who, who's who's really but, in charge? But Essendon have lots of injuries. At the moment, they like do. Yeah, context, but, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, they, on, on your point with the coaches, I think that's that's what um, comes to my mind as well. Yeah. Is Brett Redden good enough to be their coach as well? I mean, that's the question I'll really be asking. Because at the moment, either he's not being heard mm. or he he doesn't have a plan. Look, when we see at this time, John Washful and them sitting together, they're planning together. Yeah. So there is something wrong with either both of them mm. or uh, John Washful is not listening to him. Only then they can have him as a successor yeah uh, it's a, but otherwise it's it's a very very uh, big problem that even uh, with the new coach with the change of the coach and this succession plan i don't think it's working for them yeah like essendon at the moment they're just this big ball of confusion i, yeah. I just don't understand like what you said if brett ratton sorry brett rotten is really in charge if he's really the coach and it's his game plan and all that He's the one that should be fronting the media, not John Walshfold. He's the yeah. one that should be saying, okay, it's my fault we lost. Yeah. It's my, you know, it's, and, and if that's the case, then what's Walshfold doing? Yeah. He's supposed to be, you know, in charge. It's still his, his role as coach. Exactly. I mean, like Paul Ruse in his final year before Goodwin came in, he didn't say, okay, it's yeah. all yours. No, he was still in charge. It yeah. was still his team. So, like I said, Essendon, they're just such a, a they, confusing outfit. Yeah, I think it's, it's running from the top to bottom at the moment, the confusion and McKenna, like, I didn't know what he was doing <laughs> over there. So the confusion is sort of running there. Yeah. Uh, but, well, uh, Carlton, uh, that, that game, <laughs> <laughs> controversy or not, but Amazing. that was an awesome kick. Like, li uh, every player wants to um, yeah, live their dream, <laughs> and all the fans will love that uh, that part. Okay. Although it was all controversial, and we understand that that there was a lot of mistakes yes, that happened. Of course there was, uh, yeah. But then again, um, to uh, having the other team leading the whole way, and then at the end just come and lead at the right minute, I think that was awesome. Yeah, it, it's it's good for Carlton to have the experience on the other side for a change because the last yeah. time that. You know, with Port Adelaide, and, and it did cause our director a minor heart attack, but yeah. that's okay, that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, good, good on Carlton, it was a, a cracking game. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And we'll be back with Javier and George discussing the next compact AFL fixture. Welcome back to the panel. And before we look at the round 13 fixtures, Javier and George recorded this earlier today. Welcome to the show, George. Thanks for having me again, Javier. Yeah, George, um, the league has finally uh, released the entire fixture from rounds 14 to 18. And uh, it has really surprised many footy fans um, with another dose of like compact matches, something like uh, 31 matches in um, 19 days or so. Are there going to be any fit players uh, running around That's to play the finals? That's a really good question, Habib. It's going to be a frenetic finish to the season where clubs are going back into hubs. They're travelling all over the, the country again. Uh, we're seeing new venues such as Cairns and Alice Springs. So clubs have been playing in Adelaide, of course, and Perth and the Gabba in Brisbane as well as the Gold Coast. So uh, they're going to f rack up some frequent fly points, certainly. <laughs> uh, but as you say about the injuries, uh, as we know, Richmond have been decimated over the last six weeks. They will welcome back some good players like Toby Nankervis and David Asprey, as well as Dion Prestia. Mm -hmm. Goodness, they really do need those players back. Even Definitely. their, their filling players have done a superb job, but they want their big guns back. Yep. Uh, the team that is really hanging on to their spot in the eight quite tenuously is Collingwood. Their star players are falling over like 10 pence to go. We know about Ben Reid with a hamstring again. He's been very unlucky with soft tissue injuries over the years. Trelaw has done a hamstring again. Mm. I don't think we'll see him back. Uh, Quayne, as we saw with that nasty shin injury that got split yeah. open by that metal stud. Uh, Jeremy Howe, the high-flying half-back flanker. We might not see him back. So some terrible outs for Collingwood. West Coast Eagles, they have some big names out as well. Elliot Yo, Waterman, Redden. Um, mm. They're going to have their strength um, and, their, and their fitness and their resilience tested over the next five weeks because they do have a tough run. Yep, their yep. fitness staff will be working overtime as all of the fitness staff yeah. across the clubs will have their work cut out. With the doggies, your mob, you're happy to have Lockie Hunter back as yep. well as 
uh, Aaron Norton, two stars that did really well in round definitely, 12. Definitely. And I, I love the way Lockie Hunter um, got his jumper as well. So, yeah, sent a good message. <laughs> yeah, Lin Jong and uh, Shaki are still out. I like Lin Jong. I'd love to see him back before the end of the season. Yeah, yeah, why not? And um, I believe uh, West Coast, I think, and Richmond, everyone, they've got big names. Uh, Collingwood missing a lot of big names there. And uh, looking at the AFL ladder today, um, like the last four positions in the eight, they're up for grabs uh, at the moment. And uh, uh, some of the teams are better placed with the new uh, sort of schedule where one having a four-day rest period, and then some having two four-day rest periods, while some others are on a nine-day rest period. Um, in your opinion, like which teams would be more disadvantaged than others? I think the West Coast Eagles have the, the tougher run home, Habia. They had their bye a couple of weeks ago. So the last five games, they do come up against some really tough opposition and they play their sides off short breaks, for example. Round 13, they take on GWS, which is a huge class. As mm -hmm. we know, GWS are missing Toby Green, and they're desperate to make the eight. They play the GWS on the 23rd of August, and then four days later, another blockbuster clash against Richmond. Mm. Five days later, in round 15, they take on Essendon. Five days later, round 16, they take on the Doggies. And then in round 17, four days later, they take on the Saints. So that's a really hectic schedule where... Yeah. As we said earlier, their fitness staff are going to be working overtime to make sure their players are in tip-top shape. Yeah, but that's probably the only team we can say that that could be disadvantaged who's got a home crowd, like live home crowd there and then their live home ground as well. So they, they, they can afford to be a bit, of, a bit disadvantaged. Well, yeah, their, their round 13 clash against GWS is their last clash in Perth and then mm -hmm. the rest of their matches are in Queensland. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the sides in the top eight, interestingly, they have buys coming up over the next two to three weeks. For example, the Cats have a buy round 15. Brisbane have a buy in round 14. Port, who are on top of the ladder, they have a buy in round 15. Mm -hmm. Now, the Cats are an interesting, an interesting case. In recent years, they have been notoriously slow and lethargic after a buy. They've mm -hmm. had a terrible run of losses after buys. They're going to have to be very, very careful and guard against any complacency and laziness, I suppose. They don't want bad habits creeping in after the buy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, any change how you see the league ladder developing um, in the next few rounds? Uh, what will be the important games um, over the three weeks? Well, Melbourne have had, had a surge in recent weeks. You remember a few weeks ago, I actually tipped them to not even be in contention for the finals. I wrote them off. Mm -hmm. They've come back and surprised me with some wonderful results. Uh, they still have a tough run though. Um, so they're no, by no means guaranteed of a place. They play the Dogs round 13 and then they play the Saints rounds 14. They're two pivotal clashes. Yep. Uh, they then play the GWS in round 17. So they're three games out of the last five that will shape their their, uh, their season, they're desperate to make the finals again. Um, Richmond also have a very tough run, Habia. Um, I'm looking at some of their pivotal clashes. Round 14, they take on the West Coast Eagles. Huge match. Um, mm. That'll be a rating sensation. That same round, we have the traditional enemies, the Pies versus the Fast Finishing Blues. Of any side outside the top eight, the mm. Blues will pose a threat. Round mm -hmm. 15 sees the Brisbane Lions taking on Collingwood. Collingwood are in a very vulnerable spot at the moment, especially if their injuries continue to mount. They've had uh, a terrible run of injuries. They had that disappointing loss to Melbourne where they lost by over 10 goals. The GWS take on the Blues as well in round 15. Another important clash they sides, keen to make the eight. I'm really looking forward to round 17 where Geelong take on the Tigers. That is going to be an absolute classic match. Hopefully by that stage, the Tigers have more players back. West Coast take on the Saints in that particular round as well. And Melbourne take on GWS, where both sides are going to be desperate to be in the eight. And then round 18, it's the Pies taking on Port Adelaide, the black and white teams. Clash of, uh, yeah, the Clash of the Colours. <laughs> St Kilda take on GWS. We don't know dates, times and venues as yet, but it promises to be a fantastic run home. Hopefully sides have enough fit players. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, George, once again. Thank you, Habir.
We'll be back with the round 13 previews after these messages. You are with the Multicultural AFL Foodie Panel. Round 13 begins tomorrow evening when the Gold Coast play host to Cousin from DAO Stadium in Darwin. This promises to be a blockbuster. On Saturday, the Doggies play Melbourne from Metricon, while Port Adelaide at Adelaide Oval take on the Hawks. Later Saturday night, Essendon clash with Richmond from TAO Stadium. And Fremantle met the Swans at the Optus Stadium. What are your thoughts, Gabriel? Well, I believe uh, Gold Coast versus Carlton. I think that's <laughs> going to be a cracker of a game. Yeah. Uh, Carlton will have their tails up at the moment with, with, with the last minute victory. And uh, Gold Coast, I think, because they're playing in the Darwin, I don't think uh, they will win that one. But as they've been doing um, in a lot of games, they need to put a show. Yeah. Uh, and I believe it's going to be a Carlton game. Uh, Bulldogs versus Melbourne, I, I think it has the potential to be a very good game. Uh, Melbourne are on the rise at the moment. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, and Bulldogs didn't really have a, uh, they had a win, but it was a scrappy win. So whether it was really a win for them or not, we will see in this game, I suppose. Uh, but I think Melbourne will probably come out on top. Yeah, I understand your caution <laughs> in regards to that game. But I think uh, I'm still not utterly convinced with Melbourne. Mm. I think that Melbourne won purely because Collingwood are in a mess right now. A lot of injuries, a lot of off-field dramas. I don't think that they're going to even be in the top eight the way they're going. The Bulldogs, on the other, other hand, I think um, I think that they're a little bit sharper than what some people might think. I think that the Bulldogs could um, really do some damage against Melbourne. And Gold Coast and Carlton, who would have ever imagined that the match of the round yeah. is going to be Gold Coast and Carlton? Who would have ever predicted that? But it's yeah. going to be a cracking game. Uh, I think that Gold Coast, they're actually sort of used to those sorts of condi conditions in Darwin, very similar to what goes on in Queensland. So just for that, I think Gold Coast have a have that sort of uh, advantage against Carlton, but it, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Carlton caused an upset. Yep, okay, and uh, I believe Port versus Hawthorne, uh, Port, I think it, it's yeah. gonna be an easy one. Uh, Hawks not, uh, with the Sicily out as well, I think they, they, they got no chance. And Essendon versus Richmond, uh, easy win for Richmond, I suppose, if Essendon keeps on uh, their confusion, yeah. uh, I would say. And uh, Fremantle versus Sydney, oh well, I don't know what Sydney though. <laughs> Sydney, Sydney, like they, they play well at Optus as well. Um, generally, I've seen when, when Buddy uh, used to play, but the long way might have a good um, judgment of the stadium that might help them uh, and might cause an upset. But I, I will still tip Fremantle on that game. Yeah, uh, like with Carlton at Gold Coast, I think that Sydney has a chance of beating Fremantle hmm. away. I, I think this is a really good chance for uh, Sydney to win. Uh, you, you would think that Fremantle, because they're at home and, and they didn't do too badly the mm -hmm. past few weeks, I don't know, but I think Sydney are a little bit sharper than Fremantle right now. And, and Essendon, like we said in our comments earlier, Essendon are just this big ball of confusion. I, mm -hmm. I just don't know where they're going at the moment. I don't think they know where they're going at the moment. So for me, Richmond is just far too superior at the moment. And Port Adelaide and Hawthorne, well, Hawthorne, Mm. Not mm. the Hawthorne of old. If it was the Hawthorne of old, we'd probably say Hawthorne should win that one. Even though it's at Adelaide Oval, Hawthorne could win that comfortably. But in this case, no. It's the other way around. Port Adelaide should win pretty easily. Yeah. Thank you, guys. On to Sunday, Adelaide take on Geelong from Adelaide Oval. And the Brisbane Lions home at the Gabba go head-to-head -head with St Kilda in a battle royal. West Coast play the Giants from Optus. And Collingwood take on North Melbourne from the Gabba. What are your thoughts, Javier? Oh, uh, well, uh, I suppose Adelaide was a Geelong. Uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing <in> the, <laughs> yeah, but I, I really like the way Geelong are coming up at the moment. And yeah. I think that they're making big statements um, the way they are. Um, I think it's going to be easy game for them and good percentage booster. Nothing can stop Geelong. Brisbane versus St Kilda at Gabba. I think that's, that's a huge factor. Uh, any other uh, venue, I would have written uh, Brisbane Lions off yeah. but just because of the home I think they've got a very good advantage and they should take on that advantage as well mm. and give uh, St Kilda uh, a beating so that uh, <laughs> for, for their own Tra sake Tracy's words very carefully yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah I think yeah yeah. That, that, if, if you need it doesn't matter what happens uh, in this game, but I think this will prepare St Kilda for the finals yeah. um, whatever the result wow. and uh, yeah the, Imagine ju that. 
<laughs> Judging by the form, I think St. Kilda uh, will come out on the top uh, in this game as well. What do you say? Well, uh, these two, well, the, as you said, finals, these two could potentially fa face off in yeah. the finals at some stage. Um, you're right, oh, but also at the same time, St. Kilda have been playing in the Gabba a few times already, like most other teams. Mm -hmm. So I think they're, they're starting to get used to the, to the ground and, and everything. So having said that, St. Kilda does have an advantage per se, mm -hmm. But Brisbane, I think Brisbane at their home, where they're comfortable, where at their best, I think that they should be too strong. Um, and, and what you said earlier about Adelaide and Geelong, when Geelong are on form, which they are now, they're scary. Amazing. They're very, very good. So when Geelong are, like when everything's going well, um, just sit back and enjoy <laughs> how they play. <laughs> when they are yeah, fit and firing, uh, they can beat anyone. And, and they can probably consider them, you know, probably premiership favourites at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. The, yeah. The, the way they played against Port Adelaide, definitely. Uh, and West Coast GWs are Giants. I think Giants really need to show up, like as in... Uh, yeah. If, well, they need to, or else it's yeah, a game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that too, like, uh, yeah, yeah, literally, yes. But... Uh, <laughs> They just want. They, it is such a good team, mm. such a good players who can beat any team on any day. But the way they're performing is way under par at the moment. Yeah. And really, and they really need to think uh, what's going on with the team. And even Cornelio, uh, he as at least he was open, open and uh, honest about his team's performance. It was a hopeless performance against Sydney. And uh, they really need to come up with something to beat West Coast, who are on song at the moment. Yeah. I don't think uh, GWS Giants have anything at this stage uh, mm. to beat West Coast. Um, so it's going to be West Coast for me. And Collingwood, they they have got their injury run and a good time for North Melbourne um, mm. to sneak one in. Yeah. Uh, at the moment and just pounce on Collywood. Yeah, if, if there's ever a time or a moment for North Melbourne to um, cause an upset, I think this is it. I, I think that North Melbourne, the way they played last week against uh, Brisbane, yes, they were very unlucky. Um, well, they should have done much better because they mm. did give away a lot of really silly chances um, and they basically handed Brisbane the win. So North Melbourne, they have to learn from those mistakes. Um, so I think I'm, I'm going to go for an upset. I'm going to go for North Melbourne, but uh, West Coast at home against GWS, no contest. The way West Coast are playing at home, yeah. like we said before, it's just night and day for where they were at the beginning of the season where you can tell they just did not want to be there. They're at home now and they're killing it, so West Coast for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, guys. Which brings us to my deep selections, and this week I'm going to pick Carlton, Western Bulldogs, Port Adelaide, Richmond, Sydney, Geelong, St Kilda, West Coast, and North Melbourne. That's all we have time for tonight, but before we go, take in the last thrilling couple of minutes of the Fremantle Carlton game. We took on the first game, now another ball to be won. Hill got involved, back to Ryan again. Tumbles one inside 50, Tabin is used to the body, superb. Here's Cottrell, oh, he's a good runner, covering a lot of ground. You don't want to kick it in that five, though. That's not ideal, but getting back almost. Ricochet back to Cottrell, and again, the top has come up with Blakely. To a dangerous position forward to the ball for either club. Hughes, a wide one in the five direction. Numbers here with the Blues. Centerfield, now Cripps. Handballs forward to Gibbons. Man. Gibbons measures it, and Mackay has taken it. He's a left footer. How big's this kick? A minute 20 left. Harry Mackay. Oh, he hit the wrong side of the ball. Across the goal. It's marked by Jones. 15. Hasn't kicked a goal since 2016, and it'll look like it. McConing down. Eddie Betts on the fly. Hughes' kick doesn't clear the area. Sonny Walters with brilliance. Bouncing ball. Tabernacle. Pretty happy to see it out as a deliberate. It is. Play on. 14 seconds left. That's out in the full. The one thing you couldn't do. I reckon Casbolt should have taken the run. Yep. Downfield. Oh, got a downfield down free. Downfield. It's a late hit. Oh, it's wow. downfield. Okay. Every schoolboy's dream. Kick after the siren to win the game for your club. Wasting no time, Jack Nunes. Set shot. He strikes it beautifully. He's got it! The Blues win it! Jack Nunes after the siren has won the game for Carlton. That is unbelievable.
That's all we have time this week. You can also watch us in Adelaide on Channel 44, Friday evenings, also on Aurora Foxtel TV at midday Saturday, and on the NENBC YouTube. You are listening to this podcast on the Community Radio Network, and the AFL Diversity News in Eight Languages can be heard on the national multicultural radio stations with the weekly food report and tip selections available from the NENBC website. I am Vanessa Gatica. I'm Harbi Singh. I'm Gabriel D'Angelo. See you next week.